The Seven Laws of Trading The operation of successful speculation is by no means an exact science. In truth, it is an art, a skill that takes years to develop and one that can never be mastered, just as no one can master baseball, chess, or any other equally difficult endeavor. However, speculation does have certain principles that must be adhered to. Let's take a look at the seven laws of trading. Number one, always cut your losses. This one law is cited by all the great traders as a key to their success, and yet it is not widely followed by most traders. When buying a stock, it is easy to get excited and to think about all the potential there is for profits. However, things often do not go as planned. If a stock turns against you, which can and will happen, your goal must always be to cut your losses very quickly. Even well-known companies such as Zoom, PayPal, Square, and Facebook can suffer large losses, and the truth is, there really is no safe stock. Just one large loss can literally decimate your account. Let's take Netflix as an example. At one point, this was a can't-miss stock. Everyone was watching their programming, and it seemed like a lock bet. However, things can change very quickly. What was once a $700 stock fell to $221 a share in April of 2022. If you had purchased Netflix at $500 a share, it would need to more than double just for you to get back to break even. What's worse is a stock like Netflix, which has already shown incredible weakness, is not likely to show strength anytime soon, as it clearly is not offering what Wall Street wants at this point. Losing positions not only destroy a trader financially, they can also be devastating emotionally. Make a commitment to cut your losses quickly and before they get out of hand. Number two, follow the trend. We've all heard the phrase, a rising tide lifts all ships, and it is as true in trading as it is in sailing. If you've ever tried to swim against the current, you know how frustrating and exhausting it can be. So the question becomes, why try to swim against the current of the market? Take a stock like Shopify, for example. By looking at the chart, we can clearly see the trend is to the downside. Why try to fight it? Why try to buy a stock like this that has a lot of headwinds going against it? Instead, why not buy a stock that is uptrending, that has everything in its favor? Stocks that are down are down for a reason. It's as simple as that. Remember, the smartest minds are on Wall Street. If a stock was such a bargain, you can bet all the big funds and institutions would be all over it. Make a commitment to keep your buys to stocks that are in an uptrend. And one more thing. 75% of stocks will follow the general market conditions, so don't try to be a hero and buy every stock in sight in the midst of a bear market. Wait for strong bull markets before you get aggressive. Remember, a rising tide really does lift all ships. Number three, look for low risk, high reward entry points. No one is perfect and no one masters the market, but the good news is that perfection is not required to be a profitable trader. Instead, all you need to do is set up your trading in such a way so that you can be right a small amount of the time and still make money. For instance, if you lost $100 on two trades and make $300 on your third trade, you would still be profitable even though you were wrong the majority of your trades. You did this by keeping your losers much smaller than your one winner. In real terms, this means looking for low-risk entry points where you can cut your losses quickly should the stock run against you. If your stock does indeed turn into a winner, then the profits take care of themselves. Number four, keep your watch list focused. Far too many traders have a difficulty forming a concise watch list of stocks. Between tips, rumors, and social media, they just can't stay focused. Remember, you can't own all the stocks, so don't let FOMO get a hold of you. Your goal should be to keep your watch list comprised of the leading stocks, that is, those stocks showing the strongest technical action and superior fundamentals. 
I make a point to avoid low-priced penny stocks, which are unlikely to draw the interest of professional institutional investors. Number five, never get aggressive in the midst of a losing streak. Of all the speculative blunders, there is none worse than the sin of averaging down. That is, to buy more shares of a position that is already showing you a loss. Some people think, well, if I liked it at 100, I'll love it at 85. This is a very dangerous and often costly way of thinking. If a stock is showing you a loss, it is telling you something. Clearly, it is not in the market's favor. By adding to a loser, you put yourself into a terrible situation. Should the stock continue to weaken, you have now tied even more of your capital into a position that has already shown itself to be shaky and unsteady. Likewise, never get aggressive with your portfolio in the midst of a losing streak. If you have been trading poorly, take a break or trade lightly. It's best to not get aggressive until the odds are in your favor once again. Number six, never do anything to jeopardize your ability to trade. This one rule is essential to your long-term success as a trader. While the amateur thinks of trading as a get-rich-quick scheme to accumulate riches quickly and easily, the professional concerns himself with the long-term consequences of his decisions. There are people who drive recklessly when they get behind the wheel. Sure, they may get away with it one time, but eventually, that type of behavior will catch up with them. And when it does, they will be in serious trouble. The same thing goes for trading. People who use too much leverage or plow into options or refuse to use stop losses may get away with those type of tactics for a little bit, but eventually their accounts will blow up. Never, ever, ever do anything to jeopardize your ability to trade because if things go wrong, which eventually they will, it will be game over. Number seven, discipline is the path to victory. All of the above mentioned principles are important, but they are useless if they are not applied. Just as a diet and exercise plan won't work unless you follow them, neither will these principles if you choose to ignore them. Your success in any endeavor will be dependent on your level of commitment. Think about someone who is in really great shape. Do you think they say to themselves, well, I'm tired today, I'm not going to go to the gym. Do you think they ever say, well, there's a show on Netflix I want to watch. I'll go lift weights next Tuesday. Do you think they say, oh, well, it's just a little slice of cheesecake. What harm will it do? No, the elite athlete has commitment. The elite athlete has discipline. They stick to their plan no matter what. This is exactly how the professional traders think. They don't say, well, just this one time, I'll break this rule. Or, I don't need to cut my losses today because this stock is special. No, they follow their rules and they stick to their trading plan because they know without discipline, there is no victory.